Hello everybody! In the last couple of videos, I posted several aspects of how to code with Wi-Fi on the ESP32. In all those videos, I used the left approach that you see here, where we access the ESP32 through a router. However, it's possible as well to directly access the ESP32 without the need of a router. So in this short video, I just briefly like to go over the details of both of these solutions, what's really happening behind the scenes. Let's start with the left one, the access to the ESP32 through a router. Now you see that on this particular slide, the first step is that you code into the ESP32 the SSID and the password of your router. The ESP32 wakes up, it will connect to the router with that SSID and password. The router will then assign an IP address. If you have DHCP enabled on your router, it will pick its own IP address. But if you, with your client, want to be able to access your ESP32 always at the same IP address, I recommend uh, setting up a fixed IP address in your router for your ESP32. After this is done, uh, the client can directly contact the ESP32 as long as it's within the same LAN network. So how is this done in code? I provided a very simple example of an access point and of this connection to a router. Um, so let's go to Arduino here. And if you open the file Wi-Fi router, then you see that um, you only need a few lines of code to connect to a router. You provide your SSID of the router and the password over here. Uh, then, um, yeah, I start here the serial interface for debugging purposes. So here it sets up the connection and we print to the debug interface that we're connecting to a certain SSID Wi-Fi network. Then while it is uh, trying to connect, it will print dots so that you know that the ESP32 is still doing something. And as soon as it's connected, it will then say connect it to the network with the IP address XYZ. And you can then use that to connect to the ESP32. So this is what I've been using in the ESP32 Wi-Fi video so far. Now, the second option is said is that we connect directly to the ESP32 without the need for a router. Uh, how this is done is that within the ESP32 code, uh, we just assign a fixed IP address and a password. Then the user can uh, connect directly to the ESP32 with that predefined SSID and password, and it can then access the ESP32 on a fixed IP address that also you defined in the code. So let's have a look at the code there. We open now for that the ESP32 Wi-Fi access point. And in this case, uh, you need to, of course, define the SSID of the ESP32 and then the password you want to use. Uh, then you need to define the IP addresses. Uh, it wants to know the local IP address where you want to be able to reach the ESP32 and you need to provide a gateway and subnet. Don't worry too much about these. Uh, just make sure that the gateway is a different IP address from the local IP address. And the subnet mask you can just leave at 255, 255, 255, 0. Then uh, setting it up is straightforward. Um, we first call the function soft ap config uh, that configures the Wi Fi setup for that uh, access point configuration. And then as a second step, uh, it it starts the Wi-Fi interface with Wi-Fi.SoftAP. And finally, as a cross-check, we print the IP address of the uh, soft access point to the debug interface. Okay, there's one thing I'd like to note here, and that is if you use characters that are not supported by the soft access point function, then this, um, this function over here will uh, fail, and it will then say failed uh, when you run the code. So my recommendation would be to keep the SSID and password very simple to, when you're debugging, and only when you're you know, uh, when everything's working and you're happy with the code, then make it more complex and make sure that soft AP is still running. Okay, I'd briefly like to show you how to then use this code to set up an access point. I said in the ESP32 Wi-Fi series, I used always to connect through a router. So let's take a 
code of, for instance, part two, where we have JSON communication between a client and a server and set this up as an access point. To do so, let's briefly go to the code on my repository. So we'll take ESP32 Wi-Fi part two. I'll also um, show this in the link below. And we'll go to download zip. Then in the downloads, we open it up. And the one file we need to open is ESP32 web server web socket JSON. And then we need the INO file. So this code just generates random numbers and send these to a client and the clients can send, can send data back to the server uh, just to show bi-directional communication. At the moment, as said, I set it up to connect through a router. We now want to change this to connect as an access point. To do so, let's go briefly down here. We need to, of course, first define the IP addresses we want to work at. So we go briefly back here to the example of how to set up an access point, and we can copy paste this out, all the IP addresses. Um, let's define them over here. So and next we can define the SSID and password that we want to use. Uh, for the SSID, you need to be a little bit careful with the characters that you use. So there's a certain set of characters that are just not um, supported by SSIDs. Uh, but let's just do ESP32 or so, it should be fine. And for the password, the one thing you need to realize is that it needs to be at least eight characters. You can simply cross-check if uh, the SSID and password you defined are okay, because if we run it later, it will um, give a failed if this uh, is not set up correctly. So let me shorten this a little bit. We'll just do password as our password. Okay, so next step in the setup, we need to set up the access point. So for that, we briefly go back to our example here and copy paste this section out where we set up the access point. And over here in the Arduino code, um, this is the section where the Arduino is connecting to a router, which is what we don't need anymore. So I delete this and just copy paste this in where we connect to the access point. That's all we need to do. So let's run the code. Then we open the serial monitor as you can see, it's already generating random data. I missed the beginning, uh, so I briefly reset the ESP32. And I'll deselect auto scroll so that we can see what's, uh, what happened. And so we see this is the stuff that it prints when it's resetting. It's done resetting over here. So we see here that ready with ready and ready that the access point is set up correctly. If the password, for instance, would be seven characters instead of eight, it would have said failed over here. It confirms once more the IP address. And so let's connect now to our ESP32 and see if everything is really working. So I connected with this computer to the Wi-Fi of the ESP32. And now I can provide the IP address of what we defined in the code. And if I do that, we see everything's working. We get the random number generator we wrote in part two of the ESP32 Wi-Fi video. And so that concludes this video. So just a, a quick deep dive here on the different ways how to connect to the ESP32. Hope this was helpful. As usual, leave your comments down below and see you in the next video.